So everybody, welcome to the second Friday League of Women Voters um, uh, discussion. This time we're gonna talk about um, how to file a warrant article. And um, I just wanna let everybody know that the basics are available in the town meeting handbook, which can be downloaded from the town of Brookline under the website under the subcategory town meeting. It's a PDF and it has a lengthy section on how to file a warrant article, which gives you the basics. Um, and then I believe um, perhaps we will generate a uh, how to run a document from the league that we'll put on our website. Um, so we'll try to be as helpful as possible and we'll be very interested to hear whatever questions people ask um, so that we can do our best to educate folks. This is something that um, is important and can be very complicated as we will learn. The League is a nonpartisan organization, uh, works to give voters accurate information to encourage informed discourse and to influence public, pol po public policy through education and advocacy. This year, the League is planning a series of virtual discussions and uh, our biweekly articles in the tab to be re around town government, its history, structure, and organization, as well as the multiple levels of engaged citizens' involvement. And I think this is uh, how to write a warrant article, how to file a warrant article is one of the examples. Um, so we will appreciate questions from our audience. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, there is a little um, graphic and underneath it is written the word chat. So if you want to ask a question, you can write it into the chat um, and we'll try to answer it for you uh, as we move forward. Um, and now I'm going to welcome my colleague, Felina Silva Robinson, who will be your host this morning and introduce our speakers. Felina. Thank you, Betsy. Today we have individuals with long time experience with town meeting to help us understand all about writing a warrant article. In addition to being a town meeting member, Neil Gordon is also a member of the advisory committee and has created many warrant articles for consideration at town meeting. We also have Sean Lynn Jones, who also currently a town meeting member and is a former chair of the advisory committee and thus has listened to and provided guidance to many petitioners of warrant articles. Jocelyn Murphy is Brookline Town Council and reviews all warrant articles to be sure they have been drafted properly and advises on how a warrant article may affect existing town bylaws. Neil, can you start us off? And so when uh, Sean and I did this presentation about a year ago, uh, we, we did it live in the uh, Denny room of the uh, health department uh, building. Uh, we divided the uh, presentation up into the technical steps on the one hand and uh, what I call the political steps on the other. So there are technical requirements to filing a warrant article. And a warrant article, uh, the warrant itself, is the warning to the town. The town meeting is coming, and these are the items that will be addressed at town meeting. No other items will be addressed at town meeting because they, they are without the warning to the town. So the individual warrant articles uh, that comprise the warrant uh, or, or notice to uh, you know, the voters and the residents that uh, this is happening and it's an opportunity to comment through the process. Uh, and so the, the process starts with uh, an idea uh, of uh, how you might influence or change your town government, grassroots at its best. Uh, the warrant is open now, which means that you can actually submit a warrant article uh, to town hall uh, it closes, which means that the last date to submit a warrant article is March 4th, 
at noon. Um, it requires a, an article to be in good form. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Jocelyn Murphy Town Council can, can speak to that. It requires the signature of 10 uh, Brookline voters. And with 10 good book, Brookline voters signatures, town meeting will take up your warrant article. Um, am I let, you know, Sean or Jocelyn speak to um, uh, how to get those articles in, in good form in the, in the first instance, how to draft them and get them submitted which happens before the process starts. Can I just make a, a, a quick comment here? And one of you may please think about how you might address it. <clears throat> just in the big picture, the warrant article is legislation, it's, it's draft legislation because it is a document that will be taken to the town meeting for a vote. And therefore, if you think of the town meeting as the municipal legislature, the warrant article is in lowercase words, um, a, a way of passing legislation, which may or may not mean a bylaw amendment or other, other versions. But anyway, um, just wanna kind of make that connection. And now next speaker, please. <clears throat> I'll say a few things and then uh, Jocelyn probably has more to say as well. Um, just to, add a little bit to the big picture. And this is obviously a session on how to write a warrant article, but we have to remember a fair number of the articles on the warrant for any town meeting are put on the warrant by the select board, uh, either directly on their behalf or on behalf of a town department. And so there are a lot of issues that are already on the warrant. Uh, one of the big ones this year, of course, at the annual town meeting will be the annual uh, budget for fiscal uh, 22. And um, in a lot of cases, uh, it makes more sense to amend what's already on the warrant article on the warrant than to come up with your own warrant article. In fact, on the budget, it makes more sense to get involved in the process through the advisory committee's hearings to try to modify uh, the budget. But that will be one particularly uh, difficult and complicated uh, discussion this year. The other thing, uh, just to build on what Neil said about how it is meant to warn the town uh, I love that language. Uh, it's, uh, it's not necessarily true that a warrant article is going to be scary, although some might be, depending on how you feel about them. Uh, but at the bottom of every warrant article, it says, or act on anything relative thereto. It's boilerplate language. And it means that only something within the scope of the warrant article can be discussed when that warrant article comes up. You can't suddenly uh, amend a warrant article that would change, say, parking requirements in Brookline to say that every street must have a bike lane, even though those issues might be related in your mind, uh, it wouldn't enable town meeting to get into a much broader discussion. And we'll come back to that a little bit later, maybe when we talk about the scope of the article, which is a, you know, a technical and very important point sometimes that limits the discussion for town meeting. Um, just one uh, important, point for this year, because we're living in a virtual world, you still need to get 10 so-called wet signatures. Although I don't really like that term. It's like wet operations, wet markets, and wet signatures. But real signatures, not virtual ones, are still required on a piece of paper uh, to get a citizen's petition warrant article uh, on the, uh, the warrant. And as I understand it, this year, the in-person delivery is going to be scheduled. So you should make an appointment. Neil may know more of the details about that, but just for COVID-19 safety uh, reasons, don't all go to town hall at once. Uh, but it's still not virtual. It's still the old fashioned way for actually filing the, the warrant articles with the deadline being March 4th. Um, there, I think as Betsy said, many different kinds of warrant articles. Uh, some try to change zoning bylaws, and I would say be very careful about what you try to do if you're going to put a citizen petition zoning amendment out there. Definitely talk to town council and uh, maybe others before you do that. There are bylaw amendments uh, for the general bylaws. A lot of um, articles that are citizen petitions are resolutions, uh, just calling in general on the town to do something or to uh, you know, recognize a particular person in some way. 
Uh, and then there are other you know, categories that are you know, more uh, unique that come up. One complicating factor, and I don't know what's going to be done about it, is the current bylaws that are posted on the website are out of date. So if you want to amend them, you will need to make sure that the, what you're amending hasn't already been amended. But uh, you can probably get updated copies from the town clerk's office or from town council, I'm not sure which, but don't assume that what you see on the website is currently uh, what is the bylaw because there have been a few amendments in the last few years. What does it mean to get something in good form? Uh, because Neil used that term generally. Uh, part of it, especially with the resolution, is writing it clearly and getting your facts right. Um, because there are sometimes resolutions that make dubious claims. Sometimes it's subjective and sometimes it's just wrong. There's a missing zero in a statistic. And it's sort of an embarrassment to the town to adopt a resolution that is full of that kind of flaw. Um, more important, if you're amending a bylaw, your language has to be uh, precise. You don't want to say, make certain requirements for garages that they can't be too big or too small that would make it impossible because of lot sizes in Brookline for 90% of the houses to even build a garage. And there are always potential inadvertent consequences when you start changing zoning language in particular. Um, I think that's you know, kind of all of the, uh, the, the basics here. Uh, I don't know, we'll get back to why and whether you should do a warrant article after Jocelyn comments on her review because uh, it's important to let uh, the moderator, Sandy Gadsby, uh, at least at the moment, and town council uh, review uh, any warrant article. Often it's routine. Uh, I've seen Sandy say, looks good to me. And it's just a you know, one sentence uh, email. And sometimes uh, as Jocelyn can say, when it comes to a bylaw change, it's a lot more complicated. Good morning, everyone. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with me, my name is Jocelyn Murphy. I have the privilege of being town council um, in Brookline, a position that I've had since around 2014. Um, I also, by way of history, I grew up in Brookline. I still live in Brookline. And so I have a tremendous amount of historical knowledge of Brookline. Um, and I just wanna point out at the beginning, I think, and by the way, I will be referring to people by their full names so as to avoid any gender distinction. I think Sean Lynn Jones' description um, was a really good one of how uh, warrant articles get um, processed. Um, I will share with you my own view, having been raised in Brookline, that I think town meeting is a wonderful creature because it permits participation by, by the community, which is really a fantastic, um, a fantastic thing. I know that there is a movement afoot to consider um, whether the town should change to a city. Um, it'll be interesting to see where that goes, but I, I, my own view is that I really appreciate the fact that town meeting offers the entire community um, the opportunity to, to draft legislation for the town. Um, so the role of town council's office is really to review articles as to form. We do not draft articles for petitioners other than um, for boards or commissions of the town, but we regularly review them just to ensure that they're in proper form. Um, and this is also a function that the moderator performs. Um, so we do ask that anyone who's drafting an article send us a draft or send the moderators or send both of us the dra a draft. I've adopted um, Sandy Gadsby's <laughs> language, looks good to me. That's typically what we will respond. Um, but there are a couple of components that must be in every article in order to um, pass muster at, at the outset. Articles should start with to, the language that to see if the town will vote to do whatever it is that the article seeks. Um, and it must end with the language or act on anything relative thereto. That language is particularly important because it permits um, amendments and modifications to the article as it proceeds through, through process. I think the best advice I can give to anyone who's interested in drafting an article is to look at the town meeting files on the website. Um, there is a town meeting web page within the, within the town's website itself. 
um, that offer hundreds of examples of articles seeking to amend the bylaws and also resolution articles. And those will give um, you a good sense of what an article should look like. Um, I encourage you, if you have questions about how to get started with an article, we're happy to help you with that. Um, unfortunately, we can't draft it um, for you unless you happen to be um, a board or a commission or a standing committee of the town. Um, you should know, and I suspect that uh, Neil Gordon or Sean Lynn Jones will talk about this in a little bit, but the petitioners of articles, um, in addition to getting 10 supporting signatures of registered voters in the town, and by the way, that's a much less burden than in some other places. Other communities often require 100 uh, signatures for special town meetings. Brookline does not do that under special legislation, but you need to ensure that your supporters are registered voters. So we always recommend that you seek more than 10, um, at least 15 or 20, just to ensure that the signatures you're getting are actually registered voters. Um, and then I think maybe Neil Gordon or Sean Lynn Jones will talk about the reviewing process, which is really quite extensive in which petitioners are responsible for. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions should they arise. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Jocelyn Murphy. And I'm, I'm just going to, I have in front of me a list of the warrant articles from <clears throat> the November town meeting. And just sort of a quick overview suggests that the select board probably proposed about uh, somewhere between a quarter and a third. Um, there were a number of multiple articles relating to a single topic. For example, um, the topic of short-term rentals got three warrant articles, which must have, I don't have the language in front of me, but presumably dealt with different components of that process. Um, there's uh, a particular set that came from the town, the select board, uh, where in order to accomplish their goal, they had to have two warrant articles to do what they wanted. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that looking into the history of warrant articles and to the format in which they're presented and the language that's used is really, really very helpful and useful um, to understand some of the, let's say, the, the, the different uh, components that are required in order for them to be effective. And then I'll pass it on to Neil or Sean, whoever wants to add. <laughs> I, I, I'd want to add in, in, in a couple of places. One, the requirement for 10 good wet signatures, mm -hmm. they don't, Jocelyn Murphy will correct me uh, if this is wrong. They don't need to be on the same sheet of paper. So they don't have to be physically taken from place to place to place. You can email your draft, ask your supporters to print them out. Uh, and however many voters happen to be in that household can sign them and uh, get, them, get them back to you. So you can collect them on you know, 10 or 15 or 20 separate sheets of uh, paper, which might be a little bit easier uh, given the current circumstance. Uh, the other comment, uh, as helpful as town council's office and the moderator and the process, which we'll talk about may be, there are no gatekeepers. Uh, any warrant article with a sufficient number of signatures in good form, bad form, legal form, illegal form, or otherwise will be printed in the warrant and will come before town meeting. And ultimately the gatekeepers are the town meeting members who vote at town meeting. Your, your odds get better if you're in good form though, I'll add that. <laughs> On this question of, uh, you know, getting a, a warrant article reviewed, um, Jocelyn Murphy and Neil Gordon have talked about the need to run it by town council and the moderator. Uh, it's sometimes, and in fact, often is good to consult more widely um, there are cases in which a warrant article might change the um, workload for a town department. And uh, although it adds to their workload to ask about that first, it still might be useful to inquire whether it's at all feasible. And you might get the response, you know, sure, we could do that, but we'd need another $500,000 budget. 
um, and you should be aware of that. We'll talk about financial implications later. And in some cases, there may already be. In fact, given this is Brookline, we have a lot of committees, there probably already is some kind of committee that works on a topic. I, um, I, I can't even keep up with all the committees we have on climate change, for example, in this town, and it's great that we do. Uh, but both within government and outside government, someone else may already be working on it. It's good to consult not just with the moderator and uh, town council. And uh, you know, I can speak from personal experience in the last few days that uh, a warrant article that I'm working on uh, already in effect is being taken up by the Preservation Commission even before it has become a warrant article on the warrant. It, it, it may or may not be necessary to have the uh, uh, warrant article, but we're aware of what's happening and you know, we can decide whether to go forward or modify a warrant article. But bottom line is don't do this in a vacuum because you may benefit by uh, consulting and distributing and talking to people. So would someone like to discuss, there's a, a couple of questions here about um, the formatting of a warrant article. And I think Jocelyn probably did address those and Neil to some extent about the signatures, but um, on a sort of a technical point, do you, show your draft warrant language to everyone who is being asked to sign, for example. And these days, well, I, you need to say that. <laughs> and these days, um, it's very clear to me that there is a huge challenge in how you reach people since we're doing what we're doing right now, which is not face-to-face -face in person. Well, okay, face-to-face, -face, not in person. Um, so do you have any thoughts about how that process may be um, followed? And um, one technical point, which could go to Jocelyn, you want a signature, but do you not, since it's supposed to be a Brookline registered voter, does it have to provide an address? Some other, yeah. So Jocelyn. Yes, I, I did see that question on the chat. Um, the form itself is very simple. In fact, I think there may be, um, in the memo I, I supplied, um, Polina Silver Robinson with a me an updated memo that was drafted by my predecessor. Um, I updated it a bit, um, and it has it shows the information that is required, which is the name of the um, person who is signing their residential address and the precinct in which they live. Um, I normally also put language when I'm, I've provided drafts in the past to petitioners. I normally also put at the top, um, you know, the below the below in the registered voters of the town of Brookline by signing below support the foregoing proposed Warren article and just briefly describing it. Um, because yes, of course they do need to read it and, and frankly be supporting it. So any, anyone here can look at the memo that I think has been distributed. If not, um, you can certainly reach out to me and I'll distribute it to you, but it does show the information that is required. We, we'll certainly put it on the league's website and find other ways to get it out. We can share it with the TMMA and others. And, and just to be clear, there is no official form. There's right. There's no form that you have to get. Uh, which, which, which is sort of an irony here. We're talking about the complexity of filing a warrant article. And then we say, and by the way, you can get your signatures on any old piece of paper. Doesn't matter. <laughs> on the other hand, it makes it more accessible. So I will create a form and I will send it um, to one of you so it can be down. Jocelyn, if you can give it to us, we can incorporate it in with your memo. That would be really, really helpful because what we are learning and have learned just in our conversations leading to this morning is that lots of people would like to file a warrant article and they're very confused about what they need to do. Yes, I would be happy to do that. Okay, so Sean and Neil, other thoughts, comments? On this question, I was literally pulling up the form on my computer, uh -huh. and I'm happy to forward it to anyone and everyone. It's called the Warrant Article Signature Page. And it has the you know, places where you write you know, name, signature, and address. Ironically, it does not include precinct number on it. And this is what we were given by Town Hall when we asked if there was anything. Okay. Uh, but That's it does important. have the other information. 
the, the precinct number helps the town clerk's office identify uh, and authenticate the signature. So it really should be there. You must not have run, run it by our office. Sean it came from the town clerk's office. What can I say? <laughs> okay. Um, the, the, I guess we're, we're going to help put together a very, I hope, a complete and comprehensive set of guidelines. I guess we're. So maybe, so maybe maybe I I can in, insert uh, now. Uh, we alluded to this uh, a, a little bit. Uh, as Sean did that. Think about what it is <clears throat> if you're contemplating a Warren article. You're trying to accomplish, uh, and it, you know it may be a change in the law. It may be a, you know urging of action. But if it is not a change in law, if it's a change of policy or an urging of action, um, ask whether that's something that actually needs to be brought to town meeting to a rather uh, extensive uh, uh, and intensive process or whether uh, lobbying the select board, for example, uh, might achieve the same result. Uh, as, as Sean said, you start drafting a Warren article and you find, uh, I guess, good news for the person wanting the change that some board committee or commission is already taking it up. Uh, and in fact, maybe drafting a Warren article of their own uh, to accomplish exactly what you, uh, what you want. Uh, so there, there are other ways besides making the line outside town council's office longer. So other thoughts from either Sean or Neil or maybe I'm, I'm looking at the chat and I think we've probably answered the questions. Um, if you want to ask a question, you can put your little, uh, down at the bottom, there's a, a signature, a, a sign for putting your hand up, or you can still add things to the chat format. Um, Jocelyn is raising her hand. Okay, please, Jocelyn. Thank you. I think it's very important that people know um, that their articles um, must, um, their drafts must include their name, their contact information, um, because what happens, and I, I, had, I had expected that Neil Gordon or Sean Lynn Jones would talk about this after an article is filed, and I understand that this Forum is about drafting articles, but there is a very um, robust review process. So petitioners must know that once they once they file an article, they will be responsible for shepherding their article through that review process. Um, so the form of the article should contain your name and your email and telephone number. I think we might be ready to make the transition that Neil and I have thought about to discussing the many details of the review process. Both of us have been involved in that uh, extensively at the advisory committee, and Neil's also shepherded a lot of warrant articles through himself. So we have a lot to say about that as long as there are no more questions on the you know, filing, drafting, and initial uh, stages. Um, Before we get through the process. I, I think you're right, Sean, but I am going to say we did get a question which seems to relate to the technical issues. Um, and that was why it's not permitted to use digital signatures. Um, and I don't know, maybe Jocelyn, there's a legal uh, requirement that we somehow um, go through steps to permit digital signatures to be allowed. Anyway, if you can answer, please do. So uh, the answer is that um, as a preliminary matter, the Secretary of State um, requires wet signatures for election related. Um, for election related uh, I can hear, I'm, I'm echoing it appears. Let me turn my video off. The Secretary of State requires wet signatures for election related matters. And it is within the discretion, as I understand it, of the town clerk to require uh, wet signatures, and um, that and they do. 
they have said that it, um, it's the only way that they can comfortably authenticate a signature. Okay, and it may well be, just speculating here, that the experiences that we are having during this period when everything is being done remotely, we may learn that there are ways to accomplish that that can be considered as we go forward. But at the moment, I think we are um, sort of locked into our wet signature plan. Uh, Mr. Vitolo, I think, is waving his hand. Please unmute, Tommy. <laughs> Uh, hi, Tommy Vitolo, State Representative. We've certainly had some conversations in the legislature about this. Look, kindergartners are in schools 25 hours a week. It's not risky if two people are wearing masks to get a signature. It's just not. The science doesn't show that it's risky. Um, and so, so the, the barrier, right, you, can, you can communicate with folks with telephone or email to get them to text for them to read. Um, you can pick up the signature off their porch. There's lots of ways to do it if you are you know, really concerned um, above and beyond what the science suggests. Um, and we're, we're talking about 10 signatures here, not, not running for Congress. Um, so like that is just not, um, that's an easily surmount. Of all the barriers to getting your warrant article to be adopted by the law, this is a really small one compared to persuading um, 120 town meeting members that it's a good idea. Uh, but I was going to ask, and maybe uh, Neil and Sean will get to it in the next part, or maybe it belongs now, for them to explain why, um, or that rather, whereas in other legislative bodies, amendments can make things looser or tighter. Um, in town government, we have particular restrictions about the way that a proposed warrant article can be amended, and that should be thought about when you file the Warren article because uh, your options are more limited. And so if, if Neil and Sean want to get to that either now or later, I just want to make sure they talk about scope and, and how amendments are limited by scope. So I'll, 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 I'll take an opening uh, at that. It, and that is, um, there, there is public notice of the Warren. It's posted in 16 precincts. It's published in the tab, it's on the town website. Uh, and so if you're a town meeting member, you're going to be a town meeting. But if you're a, a resident of Brookline, uh, the warrant is published, you read it and you go, great, I'm not worried about any of these things. Or you find out that there's rezoning your neighborhood to something that you may or may not like, uh, there you know may may allow for uh, a business to move in next door to you that is perhaps not the pizza shop that you were hoping for, uh, and so if there is no restriction uh, and and a warrant article is filed to uh, do some rezoning, say in Brookline Village. But then town meeting comes comes along and you're not worried about Brookline Village and someone uh, comes in and says, sure, but how about we change the zoning in Coolidge Corner and St. Mary's and Washington Square as well. Um, those residents don't have the opportunity to know that they ought to be at town meeting, uh, which, which is their right uh, to lobby town meeting members, to speak at town meeting. Uh, and to, to express their opinion. And, and so the, uh, the, the article itself uh, is notice that these things are happening and, and not more than this is happening at town meeting. Less may happen, uh, amendments may happen within the, uh, you know, may, it limits that you might limit the size of the pizzas that could be sold in this rezoned pizza shop. Those, those are okay. Um, but um, it, it's an opportunity to know that these are the items that are going to be discussed at town meeting. And if they don't affect you, uh, sleep well, uh, rather than uh, be wary of all the amendments that might come to town meeting. I'll add a little bit to that because, but uh, I'll point out scope is complicated 
and it ultimately is determined whether something is within the scope by the moderator and the moderator has sole and final authority to do that. And there are cases where people have opinions that differ from the moderators, but there are really two dimensions of scope. And one is something that Neil covered right now, particularly from a political matter. You can't discuss something under a warrant article that wasn't really within the original scope of the article. If you wanted to say, we're gonna require zero parking spaces of studio apartments in the Coolidge Corner District, and someone could not amend that and say, that's a great idea. Let's also require zero parking spaces for studio condominiums in Brookline Village too. That would be you know, going beyond the scope. The other area where scope comes up and is more complicated is whether an amendment to a warrant article falls within the scope in that it goes, makes it more permissive, say, than the original warrant article. And I'll use a really simple example here. Let's say Brookline has a bylaw that bans jaywalking seven days a week. And you put an article on the warrant that says, okay, let's legalize jaywalking on Sundays only. Uh, and then someone comes along and says, that's great. Let's legalize jaywalking on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Mondays. That would be beyond the scope, as I've interpreted the moderator's rulings over the years, because it's not within that range between what we have now and what you were trying to do as an amendment. And it works out much in much more complicated but very important ways when it comes to changing zoning and what is allowed and what isn't allowed and whether something is uh, restricted. But Tommy raised the question, a very important question of when you put something on the warrant, do you want to set it up so that lots of amendments are possible? To take my example, if you wanted to make jaywalking laws less restrictive, you wouldn't put something on the warrant necessarily that just said, let's legalize jaywalking on Sundays. You might totally legalize jaywalking. And then someone can come along and say, no, let's make it legal only on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And that would be within the scope because you would have uh, put something on the warrant, a very broad scope. We're getting into some of the weeds here, but these issues really matter. And I can recall cases, particularly with respect to how we were going to regulate marijuana uh, and uh, cannabis stores, retail stores in this town, in which the zoning bylaw committee thought through this very carefully and put something on the warrant that could be amended uh, in you know, a direction to make it more restrictive uh, as opposed to putting something on the warrant that would be really hard to amend in a way the town meeting might want to amend it. Um, the alternative, of course, is uh, for there to be multiple warrant ar articles with different scopes, but that complicates the warrant and often confuses town meeting. Uh, usually you work with one and then have a series of amendments. That's a long answer to a question that I'm not sure if everyone thinks about that you know, people should consider, especially when they're doing a bylaw amendment. When it comes to resolutions, and I'd say a large proportion of citizen petitions are resolutions, and it's easy to see the form they usually take uh, on the town website. Uh, the moderator tends to be a little bit more um, flexible uh, regarding the scope. I mean, if you had a resolution saying that, say, Donald Trump should be impeached, I know it's already been done, but you, you probably couldn't be amended to say that Joe Biden should be impeached. Uh, but it might be uh, amended by adding a clause to condemn Donald Trump for various other sins he might have committed uh, as part of the long litany within that resolution. Uh, but, you know, resolutions don't have force of law, whereas bylaw amendments and zoning amendments do. I'm not sure whether we're ready to move on to the review or whether I've raised more questions than I've answered with this lengthy discussion of scope, but it always comes up at town meeting and every amendment has to be re reviewed by the moderator to see if it falls within the scope. And sometimes very worthwhile amendments don't fall within the scope and they're not uh, discussed. I think it would be good. It's uh, nearly 10, 15. Let's, let's talk about the review process which is very useful in understanding for somebody who's new to this mm -hmm. process, what will happen once the warrant article has been drafted and the signatures have been collected. There is a multi-step uh, screening process that will take place. 
And uh, anybody who's thinking of submitting should understand what that might involve. So next, guys. I'll say a couple of words and then Neil can say more. But the really important things I want to emphasize to build on what uh, town council said, do put your contact information because many committees will want to track you down and uh, get you to schedule a hearing uh, on your warrant article. And I'll get to the many committees in a minute. And second, although this may not be so important in the virtual world, we won't always be living in this virtual world, be available um, during the whole review cycle, which would basically run through March, April, and early May for the upcoming town meeting. Uh, lots of committees will want to talk to you. And if you've gone to Patagonia for two months on vacation, uh, it's probably not going to facilitate that process. And it just really irritates chairs when they're trying to get petitioners. The other thing you can do, of course, is have multiple co-petitioners, all of whom are prepared to speak. And that shares the uh, burden and makes scheduling easier. But your warrant article, once it's on the warrant, will be reviewed by at least two <laughs> bodies and maybe many more. The select board will hold a hearing, at least one public hearing. Uh, they probably won't vote at the end of that public hearing. They'll vote later, but you'll have to be there to present the article and ask the questions. At the advisory committee, uh, your article will be assigned to a subcommittee. It may be assigned to a subcommittee that doesn't seem to have anything to do with your article. There's a school subcommittee of the advisory committee, and sometimes that subcommittee might get everything that's left over. Uh, the article on impeaching Donald Trump, for example, uh, because there is not an impeachment subcommittee of the advisory committee. Uh, although we've had a number of warrant articles, maybe there should be on <laughs> impeaching various presidents. But, you know, uh, the advisory committee, uh, although some people criticize it, consists of a lot of uh, thoughtful people who are very engaged in town politics. And if they happen to be on the school committee, they probably could still review resolutions on a whole range of other topics and it has to be divided up somehow. The other thing that's happening in uh, town is that more and more uh, committees exist and are reporting to town meeting on uh, various warrant articles within their purview. And I think most prominent among these is the uh, Diversity uh, Commission, which has now in, in the last few years, you probably have a member on this call today, made many more recommendations uh, on a lot of different warrant articles that bear in, to some extent on diversity. If you have a zoning amendment, the planning board will want to review it. Uh, they usually also weigh in or can weigh in on local historic districts. Um, beyond that, it'll just depend on the uh, subject matter. But you may find yourself going to at least half a dozen hearings and other meetings at which your warrant article is uh, heard, discussed, members of the public comment, comment and you will be required to um, present it. I'll say one other thing about this process that kind of goes back to writing a warrant article. We didn't talk about writing explanations, but when you file a warrant article, you need to file an explanation. Now you might think no one's gonna read that explanation in any way because town meeting members are busy. They'll just skip to the warrant article. Your explanation is a lot more important than you think. Not only because people might read it and might help them understand the warrant article, but the committees and the select board who review your warrant article will pay attention to that. They may even incorporate some of the facts and other background information into the write-ups that they prepare at the end of the review process to town meeting. So your explanation is useful in communicating to them why you're doing what you're doing and for relaying facts and other background information. Because whenever something is written up with a recommendation from the select board, the advisory committee or any other board or commission, it's usually an explanation of what the warrant article does, a lot of background information on what's happened before and why this warrant article is coming up, and then a discussion of the pros and cons and an ultimate recommendation. A good explanation means you probably will get a write-up that better reflects what you're trying to do than if you just uh, you know, stick in a paragraph that doesn't say much of anything in that explanation. Uh, people also might read the explanation, but it's, I think, key to the write-up process. So I probably said enough, Neil will have more because he's gone through this as a petitioner dozens of times, it seems. So there, there are at least, uh, as Sean said, two parallel processes. The select board and the advisory committee are each required to hold public hearings on one articles if they're making recommendations to town meeting. And those bodies do make recommendations 
to town meeting in the so-called combined reports. The select board uh, does a less extensive review. Uh, they, have, they, they, they have strong opinions, but they do a less extensive review and are less likely to offer uh, uh, editing and amendments, unlike the advisory committee. The advisory committee will assign, uh, as Sean said, warrant articles to a subcommittee. That subcommittee <coughs> will be you know, three or five subcommittee members. And at the hearing for that subcommittee, uh, for, for that your particular warrant article, um, depending upon its complexity, that hearing and meeting and discussion could be an hour, could be more. If it's particularly complex in the case of a zoning article, it could be multiple meetings, a hearing and multiple meetings. And that will result in a report of the subcommittee to the full advisory committee. The full advisory committee will take up the Warren article again. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, the members will have the opportunity to offer amendments. Uh, and uh, what we see a lot of are uh, amendments, not in the form of substance, but in the form of clarification um, to, uh, particularly when it's a bylaw amendment, uh, to just get that, that legal language right uh, and, and you know, improve it in ways that, are, that don't change the substance that are not uh, you know, scope issues. Um, but both the uh, select board and the advisory committee at the end uh, are for, during the process uh, are free to offer amendments and free to offer motions to town meeting. And uh, as petitioner, uh, you have a right to move your warrant article or any motion within the scope. You don't have to agree or disagree with uh, um, any particular amendment brought by the advisory committee or the select board. But the advisory committee, the select board, or any other um, member of town meeting can move any version of your warrant article so long as it is within, within the scope. Uh, we hear a lot about um, petitioners having to negotiate with the advisory committee. Um, and you know, I find negotiate to be a little bit of a adversarial term. Uh, you, you, you don't have to agree, but I like it. Uh, I like to frame it as more of cooperative effort at improvement for the most part. Um, but yeah, expect a subcommittee uh, hearing uh, uh, from advisory, expect a hearing at the select board, a meeting of the full advisory committee and depending upon your warrant article, uh, meetings uh, and presentations to the diversity commission, the transportation board, the planning board, uh, uh, you know, you name it, depending upon the subject of your, your Warren article. Uh, all of them, uh, to the extent they're making recommendations to town meeting, presumably good for your cause, because the more recommendations you have from, um, pardon the expression, special interests, um, the more likely uh, town meeting members will be swayed by the arguments. Just uh, another comment, the public hearing component of any one of these <clears throat> committee events is where the general public may make comments and can participate. Oftentimes these meetings are held, um, I want to say they're tiered versions. Some are official convened meetings where only the members can participate. Others are relaxed and informal subcommittee meetings where everybody can um, discuss things in a very casual, well, let's say uh, a comfortable way where you just sort of are exchanging uh, as the proponent what your thinking is and other people can ask you questions so you can explain yourself and um, you can also begin to understand where the questions and criticisms may be coming. Um, the process, which starts in March for town meeting in May, will go on uh, at different levels um, until the, the warrant article is actually presented at town meeting, where it gets its formal hearing, 
Um, and then many other things can happen, including what's called referral, which is to say, whoops, we didn't quite get all of the details. So we're now gonna refer it to a committee whose single purpose will be to fill in the blanks or take care of whatever was in, uh, misunderstood or whatever was omitted <clears throat> and to come back from that committee with a, let's call it a renewed version of the same subject matter, whatever it was. So uh, I think the review process is extensive and one likes to hope open at many levels. So any other comments from folks? Just to add to what Betsy said, there is really <laughs> a huge variation in the experience you'll have with different committees and subcommittees. You know, obviously with the select board, they're sitting up there and the petitioner is sitting down there and there are five of them and probably a lot of other people at the public hearing if you have a controversial topic. But uh, I didn't mention one committee that Betsy and I both serve on, the uh, Committee on Town Organization and Structure. Uh, uh, great committee, great members with lots of experience as select members of the select board, advisory committee chairs, and so on. But it's usually, you know, five people sitting with you in a room, at least in the, when we can really have meetings, uh, or on a very small Zoom chat, going over things in great detail uh, and uh, working with you to improve a warrant article in most cases. And it's somewhat like that with the advisory committee subcommittee, but then you have the full advisory committee, which has a meeting, not a public hearing, at which up to 30 members might be debating your warrant article, and it's not quite the same sort of process. One thing I want to emphasize, because people forget this, what your warrant article is not your private property. Once it's on the warrant, it's public property, and it can be changed without your permission. Uh, and maybe it should be changed, even if you don't want it to be changed. Uh, in an ideal world, there's a lot of negotiation and compromise, and everyone agrees on one motion to come before a town meeting, and it gets the support of the petitioner, the advisory committee, the select board, and uh, any other committees and commissions that are weighing in. Um, it just gets complicated and confusing, and the moderator hates it when there are six different motions coming from various people and uh, bodies on a given warrant article, but you still, as Neil pointed out, do have that right as a petitioner to make your own motion in the end, if you don't like how it's been revised by others. Uh, but the you know, concept of friendly versus unfriendly amendments really doesn't exist. It's a matter of, uh, you know, are those boards, committees going to, move an amended version, and if they want to, uh, they can, whether you give them permission or not. So two Neil? questions in the chat, I wanna- uh, Yes, I was just trying that. to make sure that we made sure that um, Abby and Kia's comments were paid attention to. Yes, I'll, let me respond to Kia Vanderzil's comment first as to when, when the general public is allowed to come out. The, the select board will have a public hearing. There will be a notice on every warrant article and, and the public is uh, welcome to comment there. The advisory committee typically holds its public hearings at the subcommittee level. Those are posted. The petitioners uh, will, will certainly receive uh, notice and those subcommittee meetings are open to public comment. The advisory committee meeting, the full advisory committee meeting, typically is not a public hearing and is not open to public comment, although the petitioners themselves are always allowed to make an opening statement and a, and a closing statement uh, and, and respond to questions uh, and clarify any misconceptions uh, or, or, or otherwise state their case to the full advisory committee. Um, any, any other uh, board committee or commission uh, uh, taking up an article may or may not have a public hearing. They're not required to, um, but the public is always welcome uh, for any, any board committee or commission taking up a warrant article to submit comments in writing to email the committee members. You can, you can always lobby uh, and, and in some ways it's as effective as speaking at a public hearing. 
Um, to um, Zana Silverman's question, what's a realistic amount of time, depending upon the complexity of your one article? So I'll start at the minimum. The select board will have a public hearing. Um, you, you'll spend more time waiting for them to get to your particular item uh, and call it on the agenda. Uh, it, it might, after that, it might be a 15 minute presentation and discussion. The advisory committee subcommittee is likely to spend uh, in, an hour to an hour and a half. The advisory committee itself is likely to spend, and I'm talking about a less than complicated one article. The advisory committee is likely to spend um, uh, you know, 30 to 45 minutes <coughs> on one article. Um, other boards, committees, and commissions similarly will take you know, that amount of time, one meeting, uh, perhaps. Um, as you get more complicated, if that uh, review of your Warren article can't be done in one subcommittee meeting, um, it'll come up again and you'll be invited back. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, you know, it's not three nights a week for two months uh, in any case, uh, but it's not, it requires more of a flexible commitment than an actual uh, significant amount of time. And in fairness, it will depend somewhat on the complexity of the warrant article. Um, so there's a question, may a warrant article or amendment be withdrawn? Somebody wanna answer that one? Uh, is that a town council question or just a general one? I mean, I think it can be, but Jocelyn, is there a legal standard that has to be met to withdraw a warrant article? Well, this is a moderator question, but I'm happy to answer it. Um, an article may not be withdrawn. However, it may not be, it, the petitioner may elect not to move it. Right. <clears throat> so it's a kind of, uh, it's, it's a procedural issue if the petitioner wishes not to have it discussed, the petitioner can request that the moderator, that to the moderator that the, the warrant article not be moved. Um, it's still possible, I think, for somebody else to decide to move it, but that is at least the petitioner's option. Ernie, you had a thought? Yeah, I've uh, had this exact situation where okay. I put forward a warrant article and um, after discussing with the individuals that would have been affected by it decided that it maybe wasn't such a good idea. So um, I talked, in fact, the uh, select board had already approved it, um, but uh, I went back to the select board and asked them to reconsider their approval and they withdrew their approval. And uh, uh, we ended up just not moving the warrant article. It, it, I could not withdraw it, but when we got to that point in the town meeting, uh, the moderator looked around and found nobody was going to make move the article, and so we went on. It is rare, but there has been at least one case in recent years in which the petitioner decided not to move a warrant article, but it was indeed moved and then voted on by uh, town <clears throat> But usually, if the petitioner doesn't want to make a motion, nobody does. But that's not a requirement. Someone else can move something under the warrant article as long as it's within the scope. And I guess the other sort of option here, if um, a, a different sort of standard, the petitioner can also um, <clears throat> recognize that there's more to be discussed, dis more to be learned, more, more investigation. And the petitioner can move to refer which is not withdrawing it, <clears throat> but also it is not asking for a, an up and down vote at that particular town meeting. So the petitioner has a few options available as to where to go as the review process proceeds. And on the topic of review, we do have a question in the chat asking about the town committee on organization and structure, uh, noting that it seemed to only meet rarely. And the answer to that simply is, it only meets when there's a bylaw amendment. Sean, do you want to comment? Well, I, either of us could comment on this, but um, CT uh, ONS has a certain purview 
changes to the town organization and structure, obviously, something like making the town clerk's position uh, appointive instead of uh, elected uh, was clearly one of those. But it's conceivable that there's a town meeting at which nothing falls within CTO and S's purview or very few uh, warrant articles. So the committee schedule is driven by what's on the warrant. Right. So it's, it's really driven <clears throat> by the specific mission and charge to the CTO and S as to its functions and if warrant articles fall within that um, general definition. So uh, are there other thoughts, comments from folks? Do you want to let's have a little bit of a wrap here? I think we've run out of questions. Neil might have a few more things to say oh. about what actually oh. happened at the town meeting and I see town council maybe too. That's fine and we welcome further discussion. Uh, Jocelyn, you have something to add, please? Yes, thank you. I just wanted, I don't think I was particularly clear about this at the beginning, but I just want to be sure that people um, are aware that when we, our office is to review an article, we, re we review it only as to form and as to consistency with law. We will not comment on policy matters. So we don't be worried that we're going to try to persuade you to change your your, um, you know, the purpose of your article. We review it only as to form and consistency with law. On the other hand, if you get a technical issue that needs to be fixed, you yes. can ask town council. <coughs> yes, town and, and I, from time to time, in an effort to be helpful, I have suggested to petitioners that they reach out to, you know, other folks who might be either drafting a similar article or certainly to the departments that might be affected. And, but that's my, the only intent is to try to make the process more efficient in that regard. Town Council can't give you an estimate of the budgetary implications no. of a warrant article, but it's something petitioners should think about. Right, and certainly advisory committee will consider. Neil, some additional thoughts? So <coughs> uh, uh, let's start with the, the end of the process and then lead into town meeting. The result of the hearings and meetings of the select board uh, and the advisory committee in particular are reports to the town meeting members. They are combined reports of uh, the advisory committee and the select board. So there will be a report and a recommendation uh, on every one article uh, that, go, that, that is posted publicly and is delivered to every town meeting member for their review and study. It's also an opportunity for petitioners uh, to update, if need be, uh, their explanation. And so if you submit a warrant article and it's gone through a process that includes amendment, uh, or if you want to rebut uh, some things that one board committee or commission is saying in the combined reports, you too can submit uh, to the town hall for inclusion in the combined reports, a revised statement. Those combined reports will go to town meeting. Um, and then town meeting will convene as scheduled. The warrant articles are taken up uh, with, with some exceptions in order. So one, you can't be sure what night of town meeting your particular warrant article will be taken up, but you should expect to be prepared to give a three to five minute uh, presentation uh, and, and sales pitch to town meeting for your particular Warren article and why town meeting should vote yes. Um, you might otherwise want to line up support uh, and ask other, uh, other people, town meeting members, uh, in particular, to speak in favor of your warrant article and coordinate those speeches so that you don't speak for three minutes and your next supporter is prepared to give exactly the same speech, making exactly the same points. The, um, the moderator will have a list of speakers. Um, there will be speakers in favor. There may be speakers against. Uh, you won't know who they are. Uh, the speakers against, uh, you won't know who they are, but anticipate that uh, they will be there and the debate alternates between pro speakers and 
on speakers, uh, including a member of the select board will speak, giving the select board's recommendation and a member of the advisory committee will speak, giving the advisory committee recommendation. And at the end of that debate, there will be a vote uh, and uh, you know, the Warren articles pass or they fail. Uh, or there, or there is an amendment uh, or a motion to refer, and they're referred. <coughs> um, there was one question that sort of falls into this category that was on the list earlier, and I've just been reminded about whether town meeting members have any training in in, in drafting or submitting warrant articles. Um, Neil Strawn, comment. I think this is it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is partly it, but I do know the moderator holds a training yeah. session for town meeting members. My guess is he wouldn't go into the warrant article com uh, component in the depth that we've tried to today. But we will certainly continue to do this on a regular basis. And I just wanted people to see, I have a pile. These are all the documents that I collected and this is as an observer, or actually in this case, member of the CTONS for the fall town meeting, which is to say there was in the beginning a, a report with the warrant articles listed. Then there, and <clears throat> then there are um, the reports of the select board and advisory committee, which is to say providing the um, warrant article plus a recommendation pro or con and subsequently, the colored ones are all the things that got dealt with after the combined reports get submitted and are made available usually at the time of town meeting with any updates, corrections, or changes. So just to be clear, the whole process from the beginning when the um, petitioner originally thinks, I would like to have this matter taken up by town meeting and then it will go through as we discussed, a pretty thorough review process, it's probably important for the petitioner to be prepared for that process and to have done a reasonable amount of background research preparation in the original um, presentation in order to make that process move more, um, I'm going to say, successfully. Um, anyway. So I would ask now for any closing thoughts from folks. I think we are at our, um, yes, <laughs> Jocelyn and Sean. One final comment, and that is that the warrant submission period is absolute. Warrant yeah. articles <clears throat> must be filed by the deadline, in this case, uh, March 4th at 4th. That is absolute. Um, there is no waiver process. Um, they will not be accepted afternoon. So just be aware of that. And for the record, um, submitting a warrant article, can it be done electronically? That's an interesting point, which I think we should address. I don't, I, so I, I know that the select board did not um, accept electronic articles at the last town meeting, I haven't heard that that has changed. My guess is it has not changed. Um, they do have appointments um, set up in order to bring materials to their office. So I would advise folks to file them in person Very unless, good. unless the select board announces otherwise. Okay. Uh, on, on that point, uh, while the, the Warren article and its signatures need to be dropped in person, you do a great favor for the town staff on the sixth floor if you also email a word copy uh, because the uh, your warrant article is going into the warrant. It's going to be published in the newspaper. Uh, it's going to be you know published and distributed to the town. Uh, and if all, all you have is a photocopy of uh, your warrant article, Someone is going to have to uh, retype it, um, and uh, so you know, please send me <coughs> uh, an email. Uh, thank you, uh, Jocelyn, uh, for the email. So then, let's say one is required to submit it in, in a paper version. That's the original official submission. 
but the town staff would much appreciate an electronic copy. Right, and I'll 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 add one more thing, and I'll and I'll I'll I'll, I'll let the other um, uh, panelists close as well, and that is, um, this is this is uh, difficult to do for the first time, uh, and to do it in a vacuum may not be best practice. And I'd I'd say do two things. One is line up supporters, but the other is find a mentor. Uh, find someone who can assist you through the process, and that person doesn't have to be a rabid uh, a supporter of your position, just someone who might be able to help you draft an article and get it into a form that uh, will ease you through the process, <clears throat> particularly through the select board and the advisory committee. Uh, because if, if, if you can anticipate, if someone can help you anticipate the questions that you're going to get, you can, you can avoid them uh, without sacrificing any particular uh, ideology. Uh, you can file your one article, but you can get it in a, in a form that just anticipates people that we know will have particular comments about the, the way you've structured your Warren article, and you can save yourself a fair amount of, of uh, time and effort. Uh, and, and by the way, you can reach out to advisory committee members in advance. Uh, you can lobby the select board in advance. Uh, and so I'm thinking of doing this. What do you think? Uh, if they agree with you, you're ahead of the curve. If they disagree with you, uh, you can go for it anyway. Sean, some thoughts? I have a, a, a closing comment, at least from uh, my perspective. We've talked a lot about the need to do your homework, to consult, to get your warrant articles in proper form, to run them by the moderator and town council. But the bottom line, the town council alluded to this before, is that we have a wonderful system here in Brookline. Citizens can put uh, warrants on the, uh, articles on the warrant with only 10 signatures. And if you look back at this historically, it's been a tremendous way for incredible innovation. Uh, I'm just thinking of tobacco control bylaws, for example, that have been put on the uh, warrant by citizens, uh, banning smoking in restaurants, so many green initiatives, even though the fossil uh, fuel free initiative was struck down, all of these bubbled up. And this is the beauty of our town meeting system of government, that warrants, articles can be proposed by anyone, and sometimes they're incredibly important, and uh, they break new ground and uh, change life and decline and serve as a model beyond this town. Okay, and on that note, I'm going to say thank you to our speakers. Thank you to those folks who are attending. And also, particularly to Felina Robinson, who's collecting um, material, which we will then, I hope, be able to post shortly. Um, that will be a uh, record of this discussion. And I hope a pretty clear and simple, this is how to do it, that will become available both through the um, League of Women Voters website and we can share it with other uh, organizations around town and uh, maybe have posted even on the town's website. So uh, did you have one final thought, Jocelyn? I think I saw a hand. No, um, that was a thumbs up. Um, oh, I think okay. this, was a, this was a great forum and it's a great dress rehearsal for future forums. Um, and so thank you everyone for attending. Well, and I thank everybody for participating. And I hope folks will have uh, used this as a way to add other issues out there. There's lots of public media, everybody's sharing everything these days. So um, I'm, and certainly we will do our best to get this information consolidated into a form that will be readily available to anyone who wants to see it. So thank you all. And now I think we will, um, and our zoomery, our zoomery, our zooming. <laughs> Appreciate it very, very much. I too wanted to say thank you to everyone. And thank you to you, Felina. <laughs>